Excellent. Good evening. It's six o'clock. Welcome to the New Jane Select Board regular meeting. It's Monday, October 2nd, 2023. And we have Ann Gala, who's on Zoom, Katie Johnson Applin, myself, Angela Sanborn. In the audience, we have Juan Ada Fowling and Merle Tessier, our zoning administrator, BCTV, and we have our road foreman on Zoom as well. Has this meeting been properly worn? Yes. Are there any additions or amendments to the agenda? Hearing none, we'll go right to the approval of the minutes, but because we've had some absent folks at meetings, we need to table September 5 special meeting and BLC meeting. We also need to table the September 14th special meeting as we don't have a forum to vote on. Them. So we'll put those on for the next meeting, please. Keep them running. <clears throat> Absolutely. Is there a motion to approve the September 18th regular meeting minutes? I make a motion. Second. We make there's a motion. Katie made a motion. Would you like to second? All right, I'll go for it. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Um, um, do you think I have, do we have Mike tonight? Uh, Mike is in Wardsboro and was going to try and call if he could at service, but he has not called yet. Wanted to talk to him about a half an hour ago. Okay, thank you. Um, now we are ready for the road foreman and road commissioner's report. Good evening, Jay. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. So the pavement project on South Wardsboro Road began last week and should be finished up next week. Um, they're coming tomorrow to do some finished grading and then the actual paving will start next week. Um, the end of this week with the holidays, not ideal to be trucking pavement. So they're gonna wait till next week to start that. There's a new concrete mix that got submitted for approval this morning on the depot road box culvert, which if that gets approved, then the box can be poured this winter and then we'll have uh, have it ready to go in the spring. Great. Nothing new on the sand salt shed. Um, someone from NRCS is meeting with us on Wednesday to look at, this, at some areas for the emergency watershed program. I don't actually recall the person's name we're meeting with, but we are meeting with someone. Um, the mowing tractor has been delivered. We're doing a little work on it and we'll add some morning lights also. Um, we have found two options for trailers uh, that i am got one we're holding right at the moment. One is a 2006, uh, right, just a regular trailer for 8,000. And then the other is a 2015 tilt trailer for 14,800. Um, I had Mike look at, at both of them and he recommended we go with the tilt one since they're a little safer to load the excavator on. Um, and the the tilt trailer's at a dealer, and they're actually running it through their shop to um, go through it, make sure everything's good on it. So we have that. And then the Williamsville Village sign has been looked at by the traffic committee, and I've attached the design. Uh, it would only be single-sided. They didn't take into account that it would either have to be two separate signs or when you put the post in the middle of the other one, it wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to read the back anyways. So um, they opted for just a single sided sign and the cost was $450 from Dennis Tier signs. The other price I don't recall, it was much higher from Dover sign, I believe was the other one that put a price in on it. And the 450s for both signs, Jay? Yeah. 415 or 450? Sorry. It says 415 on our report. Yes. Okay. Pretty sure it was 415. Hang on, let me double check my notes here. Sorry, I'm just not hearing correctly. I can read. Well, on the paper it says 415 and then you said 450, so we're just making oh, sure. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just want to make sure I had the, I had the right amount. 415 was the right amount. For each sign? No, total. Total. Okay. So the goal for the traffic comment committee is to eventually replace 
all of the village signs with this format sign so that we have that continuity throughout the villages. Can we just say, Katie, that South Lincoln is very, um, many people who live right in the center there are very attached to the sign that we have there that I believe was designed by um, John Spicer. Mm -hmm. So. I think it's more as a sign Paul the Park needs to be replaced that they were talking about not just doing signs that were still fine, but yeah, right. as, as we have to replace them. Okay, great. Um, and I'm also not sure in the village of New Fame because it's an incorporated village, if we need to go through the trustees too. So, right. We can talk about that short mm -hmm. when we get there. We're not there yet. Okay. Um, but one of the conversations that we had during the traffic calming committee was um, the South New Fame sign is invisible at night. You can't see it at all when you're driving in. And I still haven't located the one that's coming as you're headed east into South New Fame. <laughs> still can't find it. Or, no, not that. When you go from Brookside to South New the Brooks, No, the Brookside sign when you're coming up towards Dover. There's two of those on I, the know, I know where the one on the other side is. I still can't find the first, the one. It's yeah, I never see it. Yeah, I never see it ever. <laughs> okay, is there a motion to approve the road formatting commissioner's report? I make a motion. Second. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? So, good that the South Forsborough Road is going. Through and we'll be done. Jay, can you remind me what the um, NRCS meeting is for? We're going to go through. We're going to talk about that. Oh, yeah, we're going to oh, do it right through, like we always do. Jumping down a little bit. Sorry, it's exciting. Um, <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. Jay, do you need to talk about anything regarding funding on South Woodsboro, or are we all okay there? So, I had one of us send me the um, the bid, and we approved the first page, but he had attached the second page, and we didn't do that when we awarded it. So I called Dan Friday, I guess it was. Um, the paving was what was on the first page, it had many linear feet and how many price per ton, but we didn't include the milling, or the replanning, which had already happened, or mostly already happened at that point. So, when I spoke with her, if we didn't end up with enough money and left in the paving for it, um, she said we might be able to use some ARPA funds for it. Um, and we also talked about, to kind of prevent this from happening, that once the bids are in at 3 o'clock, that maybe one Anna and I should open them and look at them and see if there's any questions before you guys have your meeting, um, so that we can get anything straight out before you go to award it. That might make it easier. Um, so do we know yet whether or not we're going to um, use up the balance of the funds that we have for the roads for the next yeah. Um, it's hard to tell because the you get billed for the actual tonnage that's used. So it's, it varies a little bit, so it's hard to tell, but I know at least most of it will have, but I don't know for sure yet until we get closer. Okay. Okay. And what about the bid? I would just make a motion that we amend our procedures so that going forward, Jay and Lynetta open up the bids before the select board meetings, just so they have a chance to review. 3 o'clock is a deadline to be submitted, so if they open it at 3 or after, it's really no issue in terms of our contractual agreements with the um, vendors who are submitting them. As long as it's kept confidential until the meeting. I couldn't hear you. As long as it's kept confidential until the meeting. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Is there a second um. to that motion? Um, I will second the motion with the caution that we need to, to consult to make sure we're allowed to do that legally. Oh, we definitely can. Okay. 
That's in Lava Grove, that's what they do. Oh, okay. Okay, discussion? Jay, you were gonna say something? No, I was, I was moving on to the next thing, sorry. Oh. <laughs> All right, if there's no further discussion on the motion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Me. Aye. 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 Okay. So, Katie's question, what is NRCS? Just remind me, I know there was a discussion and there were dates, but I can't remember what it's for. So we're going to start at the town office at 9.30 and look at um, a couple places on Roofbrook and then go over to Dover Road and meet with um, Paul Dell and look at some of those properties from the covered bridge uh, through and see if any of them qualify for their assistance. I agree. They're the ones that, that do the the 75%. They, if, if it qualifies, they'll pay 75%, then the homeowner has to pay the 25%. Okay. And the town ends up being the sponsor. I do believe we're starting on Loop Road, right? At Smithbrook? Yeah. yeah. And then Bruce Brook if we need to, and then over to East um, Rock Road. Baker Brook will be the, the last one, but um, Smithbrook, sorry. I said Bruce Brook. Yeah. Uh, Smithbrook, sorry. Smithbrook, and then Rock River, and then Baker Brook Road. Yes. Yes. Okay. Have you emailed all of the property owners that this involves? Yes. Mm -hmm. I did take a day off and will be attending in person. Um, anyone else going to be there? I'd like to try to come. Um, okay, I'm interested. I wish you could be there. I'm very curious to see what you find out after you learn. And that is on Wednesday. Meet here at the town office at 9.30. And you contacted the property owner over by Smithbrook, right, Jay? Good. Okay. Yep. And I'm sure they will let all their neighbors know. Um, if there's nothing further on that, we should talk about the trip. I don't think we have to talk about the mower. Did they make a list of things they need? About there really isn't much. We're going to add some warning lights because they're kind of on the weak side. Um, they worked on the seat that, that so that Mike doesn't sit on the floor. Um, and just some little odds and ends. There's nothing really major at this point. We need just just uh, getting all the electrical stuff working. And, and then hopefully you can get some time to get out there and finish a few more of the roads. Great. Hi, Bonnet. Excuse me. OK. And you need us to vote on the trailer tonight? Yes, please. Okay. Is so, it the 1451 that you're, 1480 that, that you're holding? That's that you're our recommendation. Um, it's just safer loading an excavator on one than, than regular trailers. And it's newer and it's being served by a dealer, so it just seems a little um, like a better choice. And there's funds available? Yeah. I make a motion to give them the okay to purchase a new tilt trailer for fourteen eight. Two thousand fifteen. Okay, is there a second? Right here. Any discussion? And then all those in favor say aye. 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 And we've already pretty much discussed the signage and report back when you're ready to do, do that. If they, um, they're ready to order, is that, are you in agreement with that? Or how, we were gonna try to get it in before the, the road freezes, or the ground freezes, so. Just for Williamsville right now? Yeah, just the two yep. signs. So That's the only village that doesn't have anything. Is there a motion to approve Purchasing these signs for Whitfield. I'm going to send it to your motion. I'll second it. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Got it. I have one last thing the gravel pit. So I finally heard back from Bill Jewell and he wants.
wants to meet again to make sure my ideas or, or our ideas are the same as his on the permit. So I'm going to try to schedule a meeting with him this week and, and see what we can come up with. I'm not really sure. I think I, when I questioned his idea that the road needed to be dropped, I think he, I don't know, I, don't, I, I think that confused him. So um, I thought it'd be good to meet with him over there again and just kind of go over the I, I think we can go up with the same slope it's got and then drop down into the gravel pit. I, I don't think we need to level the road so that it's the same height as where we want to take, but we'll see what his take is on it. Okay. I'm sorry I can't be there. <laughs> Only for moral support. <laughs> I just, I, uh, I got the email and I'm like, oh, good God. <laughs> Um, and I'm happy to go in your stand if you'd like me to. Uh, Jay, will you let me know when that is? Sure. Excellent. Any further? Did we actually vote? I know we made the motion, but did we vote on the idea of the uh, process for Winetta and um, Jay to open up? We did. We voted? Okay. We did. <laughs> so everything's moving right along tonight. <laughs> I know. I can go. All the knees. Amp it up. All right. If there is nothing further on the road forming and commissioners report, are we ready to vote? All those in favor, say aye. 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 No, I said it. Thank you so much. Please extend our thankfulness to your crew for all your hard work and to you Thank as well. You Thank you. Good evening, Juanita. It is time for the Administrative Assistance Report. Good evening. <laughs> so, Mary Dearborn from Repo emails the contract for the printing of the town reports. I included it for your approval this evening um, because we had a pre existing two year contract. The new price for a two year contract has gone up by about $900 because of the cost of paper and the supply that we are now having to absorb that. Mm -hmm. So the price did go up over the last three years, four years now. Again, Wednesday morning at 9.30, the NRCS will be meeting here at the town office to start the review of the river damage and concerned areas. October 16th, appointments start for the social appropriations. Last year, there were 35 agencies asking for funding with a total of 43,513 approved for that funding. And then Rock River I'm sorry, Park, I was having trouble hearing when I, can you just repeat that? There were 35 agencies last year that were approved for a total of $43,513. Mm -hmm. Again, we have that, that many that I sent letters out to. So looking at the calendar, we have five weeks that we need to squeeze that many appointments in if everybody submits their application. Seven meetings. Yeah. Um, Rock River players are performing Harvey at the Williamsville Hall, October 6th, 7th, and 8th. Um, I included a flyer in your um, information packet and then the Heritage Festival is on the common this coming weekend on 6th um, October 7th and 8th from 10 to 4 big big doings mm -hmm. it's always exciting it's a good name. yeah um, I did have a call from Billy Morse regarding the letter that he submitted to the select board he is looking for a response or some sort of um, feedback Okay. Is there a motion to approve the administrative assistance report? I make such a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you. Does Just Jay have a question? Discussion right now. Go for it, Jay. It's not connected to our report, but her report reminded me. I forgot to ask if the fire department could use the office again for the point drop. Oh, it's always available. Yeah. Okay. Well, Thank we you. We need to vote on it. Do we? No. 
Okay. Uh, did I close that? Contract for the town reports. So one of the, the first line is what we paid this year and no. Um, the first line, the four thousand one hundred and eighty. That is if we sign a one year contract. If we sign a two year contract for two thousand twenty three and twenty four, we get it at the three thousand nine seventy five. And that includes um, 800 books with a total number of pages of 148. Okay. And that locks us in at that price, so we won't be subject to inflation for a couple of years. Correct. Great. Is there a motion? I make a motion to lock us in for the 2023-24 reports at $3,975 each year. Is there a second? Any mm -hmm. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Three. Aye. Great, and you want to sure that happens? Do you yes. need to sign? No, I can sign as the authorized agent. Okay. Or you can sign if you'd like. You're Whatever. perfectly capable. I think you've always signed it before, so I think that's fine. Yeah. Uh, we already discussed the Wednesday at 9.30. Um, appropriations, that's going to be... Um, just as a point of discussion, other towns have set up committees to look at social appropriations and then do the interviews and gather all the information and then make recommendation to the board so that the select board's not using their valuable time to do all of that. It, it may not happen this year, but it could be a recommendation for going forward. I don't think we have the I time. I suggest you bring it up in um, February and let's discuss it then and see if we can put a committee together and think through deadlines that they might consider. First decide if that's what we want to do or not. Um, and then if we do, to figure out the who and the timing. Mm -hmm. okay. And have you submitted them, the agencies that form and told them that that's the required form? I have. Okay. And I also highlighted on top that it was going to be submitted into the book. So <coughs> penmanship counts. Yes. Great. Um, and that it's required if they want to meet with us that we have to have that. Yeah. Um, they try setting it up and I, I express concern that we need the paperwork first. Thank right. you. Thank you. And the Rock River players always are you seeing any new groups of mine that we did not receive last year? Not yet. Okay. I've only got two completed forms so far. Okay. And lots going on this weekend with the Rock River players who always put on a great performance and the Heritage Festival. So everybody come out and support the town. And number six. Hi, Merle. It's so good to have you. Do we have anything started for Mr. Morris? Well, I'm trying to get Bob Fisher to uh, get back to me. Okay. I guess they had some kind of family event. Excuse me, can Merle go sit closer to the microphone just yeah. like a year? Can you come right up in here, Merle? I guess I'll come over there. Yeah. You I can't speak as loud as you'd like. <laughs> Um, Mark, just come forward in your chair, right up here. Yep. Oh. Oh. Can I unplug? <laughs> Ready? Hang on. No. no, wait one second. Sorry. Okay. I've been trying to get Bob Fisher to get back to me. Regarding this issue? I got the message that he wanted to talk to me about the situation. With Bill Morris? With higher ground. 
Oh, no, that's a separate issue. Yeah. Do you, do you have anything for Bill Morse? Huh? Do you have anything for Bill Morse? No. No. All right. Um, you're in the office the, tomorrow? The thing with Bill Morse is, what do I do? Well, I will call you tomorrow and we can work on yeah. some type of response to his letter. But as far as hybrid realm, that's a bigger deal. Yeah, we'll talk finish. about that in the committee. So let's finish this report and then then yeah. we'll go right to you because you're next. Do I get how much time do you We just need a quick vote, Marilla, and then we'll be moving yeah. on. I need 30 seconds. One second. Okay. Let's finish this and then we'll go right to you. Is there anything further for the administrative assistance report? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Juanetta, for your hard work. It's much Thank appreciated. Mm -hmm. And now, good evening, Merle. We're here to talk sure. about your zoning report and the update on the Manitoba project. Okay. Um, at the end of the whole draw the construction equipment off site, so it appears that they're honoring your draft. Uh, Work order. Okay. Um, I got a message that it's an official one to talk. And I've been trying to communicate, so it's a little more Okay. So when you know, I finally get through, I'll figure out what's the problem. Okay. So right now, I don't know. And report back. And there has been no sign of a new um, project? No activity. No. Does anybody have any questions for Merle? I just want to confirm that I heard correctly that he was asked to call out a lawyer, but has not uh, made him find the phone chat yet with the day of solution yet. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And as far as we know, no work is going on on the site? Correct. And was it a stop order um, issue? Yeah. He, yeah. Okay. Great. Who's going to move the year? Well, thanks. Um, I do have <coughs> communication with his neighbor now and then. So the word is John next door, John Walker. Uh -huh. And if anything happens at the site, uh, he'd be on the phone. He's one okay. of the interested parties. Okay. Anything further for Merle? We will await an update. Oh, Steve? I just have a question. Is this regarding project management? Yes. Yeah. Oh, so cutting in a driveway the last time I went yeah. by, is that? I won't ask any further questions. Merle, I just want to confirm that the stop work order was written and sent officially. Thank you. Pardon? You can't speak up. She's asking if the stop <laughs> order was written out and sent to the... Not by me. I didn't do the stop order. Of course, he was... No, he did. I can't hear. He said he didn't do it. It hasn't been oh. done in writing. <coughs> but didn't I just ask if it was done? And you said yes. When I missed it. Yeah, you'll come back at us. I Do you want me to draft something? Yes. Yes, it <laughs> should have been done. Yeah. So he only knows in the first Why wasn't it done in writing? Pardon? Mm -hmm. No, nothing was asked. No reason? No. I don't think he can hear you. Could you repeat it for him? She wants to know why a stop order wasn't sent to him. In writing. Because it was issued by the select board. I didn't order it. The select board took the information I supplied and said, stop work. 
Okay, so your point should be that it should be the select board that was right to actually let up. That's correct. Okay. I will draft a letter and send it to you. So one second, Merle. You're an employee of the select board. Wouldn't you be doing it on behalf of the select board? I could do it on behalf, yeah. I'll leave it to you guys on the, uh, in the office to decide how you want to handle it. I think it would be very useful for to someone to find out how what Bob Fisher uh, wants to tell us. Yeah. Do you have any recommendation? Yeah. yeah. Angela, you have a, a, a long standing relationship with Bob Fisher. You've worked with him for years and years. I'll give him a call tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be helpful and then see what he has to say and then decide if you are going home to stop ordering, then who should be the one to write it. Okay. <laughs> and I will send out my findings to everyone afterwards. Thank you. Okay. Anything further from Earl? And we'll talk tomorrow more about it. Moving right along, we have the Williamsville Hall Committee. Good evening. Glad to have you. Thank you. Nice to be here. I'm here with Bauman Mugabe, who I don't know if you're aware is now the co-director of the Rock River Players. He and Amy Donnie, because you know, Annie Landenberger has retired from that position, even though she's still involved. And we're here because the Rock River players are very interested in adding some professional stage lighting to the hall. And it will involve some minor you know, uh, changes to the, to the place. And there will be bars of lighting, one out in front of, uh, over the audience and one behind the stage. And I just wanted to say, I'm going to speak and just say that the uh, Williamsville Hall Committee, all the members are unanimous, unanimously in favor of this project because we realize how important it is to have the Rock River players in the hall. They add so much uh, to what goes on in the community. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, part of our job as a committee is we help you administer the building, help with maintenance and improvement and use. And, you know, the use has really improved this past year once we've got through COVID. And one really important part of the use is the Rockwood players. They add so much to the community that we want to do whatever we can to uh, support them. I wanted to note when Jan Lewandowski, he came by way of the Preservation Trust, and he was very impressed with the building its condition and the improvements that were made and the fact that it was used because he travels the state and he sees a lot of beautiful old buildings but they're not used and he was really taken by the fact that the hall really is used. Um, so I wanted to bring out that point. And let's see, what else? Yeah, so the adding of stage lighting will really help the players add uh, to the professionalism of their presentations. So, and so much so that the Williamsville Hall Committee, we have offered a donation of $1,000 towards the project. We can go over the numbers later, but that's how much we're, we believe in it. And also we're foregoing our profit from the donations that they usually make for the next two shows, Harvey and Glenn Gary, Glenn and Ross. So, we, we do believe in it, and that's what we're going to do. We'll amount to about $2,000. Now, Bauman's here to go over the details of what's involved, and you each should have a handout mm -hmm. showing what they want to do. So, Bauman, I'll turn it to you. Thank you. Sure. Do you have the little... I do. Okay, I'm... so I don't need to give you much. You don't have an Ann, right? I do not have it. I will send you a picture of it. So thank you, Steve. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, 
you and the committee have always been super supportive and responsive to everything about the Rock River play. So, as he pointed out, you know, um, stage like the, the Union Hall, Williamsville Hall is a wonderful historic place for us to be able to use for performances, and we've been doing it year after year since 2015. Um, the lighting has always been a challenge. Um, either we have lights in the balcony, which do a great job of lighting the top of the actors' heads, or we have them on the floor, but then we have cables snaking around the sides, which is not great uh, for, for people walking up and down. So we um, were fortunate enough to be able to enlist the help of Jerry Stockman, who is the area's top stage lighting specialist. He's worked on Broadway. He's pretty much done the lighting for every performance space around us, NYT, Next Stage, so on and so forth. And uh, he came and uh, did a number of visits and, uh, and looked at uh, what we have and uh, what the possibilities are. And he came up with this um, document that I've given you a copy. Um, I'm not going to go over the first page because it's pretty technical. I don't think we need to go over the details. But um, as uh, Steve said, we're basically looking at installing one bar between the front two uh, fans and another bar at the back of the stage with all the necessary electric and data cables hidden going under the roof, I mean under the ceiling, all the way to the balcony where they will be hooked up to a light board that will control all this. That's in a nutshell what we're suggesting to do. Um, these two bars that are going to be holding the lights and by the way, they will also be holding uh, a movie projector that uh, the Wimsley Hall Committee will use to show our movie, to show the movies instead of you know having to rig something up. It'll be attached and you can operate it remotely. Um, these bars need to be installed uh, into some structure in the building. So um, it'll be done uh, by professionals. We were able to get Doug Cleveland, who knows the building, who's done work on the building before. He did the big upgrade a number of years back. So it was kind of important to have him involved because he really knows the building inside out. He knows the electrical system and where all the ghosts are. You know. So he came and looked at it and he gave us a, an estimate for his work, uh, which is the last page of uh, So given the total cost of the project and uh, the state of our finances, we can't do it all in one, one phase. We have to do it in, se in, in, in separate phases. The first phase is the electrical installation, is uh, getting <clears throat> three electricians in there to install the electric uh, wiring, the light, the, the pipes, the, the outlets, run the data cables, and run all of this up to the balcony and have it all set to go. That the estimated cost for that alone is about $4,300. Then uh, next year, probably in the spring or summer, depending on the state of our finances, uh, we will be do, uh, addressing the second part, which is to purchase the, the actual lights, the light board, and then book everything together. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jerry Stockman, again, will be there helping us every step of the way. And when everything is set up, he will be there training several people how to use all that. Good. Yeah, so that's that. There you have it in a nutshell. So I'm here tonight with Steve primarily to ask for your permission to do the installation as per these sketches that you have. Um, and it will be, you know, as uh, non-invasive as possible. You know, there'll be a bar hanging from the ceiling in front of this first set of fans closest to the stage and one in the back of the stage and there'll be lights hanging from it so we're not really altering the building we're just adding to it mm -hmm. and if at any point any time down the line for whatever reason it's decided that we don't want this anymore it could all be taken down and nobody's the wiser yeah. it's not going to make any permanent right. changes to the building yeah, just a few holes in the ceiling, which we can patch. Which we can patch. Yeah. So I think that's all I have to ask you. And uh, oh yes, so um, 
there's a there's a little there's a tanginess involved. Doug, yeah. Cleveland, yeah. like all electricians in the area, are extremely busy. This report was prepared in July. He was only able to come and do a site visit mm -hmm. about three weeks or four weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, we've been asking him, so when can you do the work? When can you do the work? Um, uh, he told us that he can po possibly do it starting the week of October 16th. Yes. Which is one of the reasons we're this week. Which is why we're here tonight, <laughs> to, to, so I can go back to telling yay or nay. And we were surprised that he could fit us in so quickly. Yeah, I was really realistically thinking he wasn't going to be able to deal with this till next year. Mm -hmm. Anybody have questions? questions? Yes. Hey, Lyman. Hey, Ann. Um, Ann, you're very <laughs> dark. Did you turn out a light or something? Did I turn on the light? Turn off the light. Can you hardly see it. Turn it on. Turn the light on. You're very dark. Yeah. Oh, there, there you go. Hey. hey, hey, hey. <laughs> 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 okay. um, can you tell me what money is you proposing to put toward this and what your gap is? Yeah. I'm sorry, what was the first part of your question? So fine. How much what money are you putting towards this? Where it's coming from? I know you've got two thousand from right. Um, the the right now the total price tag is anywhere between eleven hundred and fifteen hundred no, eleven thousand and fifteen thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's for the whole the whole project. Right, and uh, the part one, which was. More than 2,000, I don't remember what I just saw. Right. The first part with the electrical installation and whatnot has been estimated at 4,700. And between the. 43. 43, I'm sorry. 4,300. Uh, between uh, the Williams Hall Committee's donation and the money that we have been uh, saving over the last few years, basically from performances. Uh, we have about uh, $5,000 in our budget for this right now. I wish I could say we had $50,000, but that's not the case. And the gap, we will be making it uh, between uh, fundraising, uh, grant writing, uh, and, uh, you know, we have two shows come. One, there's a show happening right now that's going to be happening this coming weekend. There's another show happening in the middle of November. Mm -hmm. And uh, there'll be another one in February, that's the annual Valentine's Cabaret. And uh, we basically, you know, try to raise the money by, by putting on performances. So, the question that occurs to me is, if you've got the electrician there, and you have the lights there, you can get this all set up now. We don't have the lights now. The, the, the lights have to be purchased first. Yeah. No, no, you can just follow with me a second. If you had the lights, it could all be done by the electrician now to install them. Yeah. And does it take long to get the lights or the lighting board? Um, it probably takes longer to research what exactly it is that would work best for us. But once we know what it is, we place the order and it usually gets here in a few days. Okay. So just, I'm just going to think aloud, and then we can see what other people uh, think as well. Um, we do have money in our um, ARPA fund. As, as funding goes, this is, if you're, con we might consider, if others agree, uh, that we use a certain percent that we consider uh, ARPA funds being used to fund a certain percent of this total cost. So let's say, I know you don't know final cost now, but let's say it costs in total 15 at the high. Let's say you were committed to coming up with 8,000 or 7,500 and the ARPA funds provided 7,500. I think it's an investment in our town, and we have no other major entertainment venue. I know the actors really love doing this work. So, um, 
I think it's a worthy consideration mm -hmm. for the town to consider using our ARPA funds. I think that's exactly the way that we wanted to use the ARPA funds was to be able to help enrich the community life. And, you know, for more than one reason, I think that this definitely does. I also believe that should it, I, you could confirm if this is true or not, but from John's, my husband's experience with the Hoover Dunham uh, years ago, I thought there was an active market for these uh, used lighting equipment. So I presume that much of this could be resold um, if for any reason Rock River artists, Rock River um, players were to fold or not be done in Williamsville anymore, or if there was some reason why the hall didn't want it there. I just it's just trying to say that the investment doesn't have the investment is not necessarily completely lost. I'm not going to argue yeah. with you, Matt. <laughs> no, try. Well, it's important, too. It, it makes sense because we have spent some ARPA funds on other town buildings to improve them as well. So it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, this is great. I was, I like was a community center, for yeah. sure. Yeah. I had a uh, proposal. I don't even know if I heard about it, but one of the members of our committee was wondering if we could use capital money because it is a capital expense. But if we have money in opera funding, I would rather go there, because we all know that the 113-year-old building will, will need it, and we need to paint it, among other things. So that's a wonderful suggestion. If that's, that's possible. I, I would. Oh, it's <clears> great. <throat> great. I would even, and um, if they, you have 5,000 now, well, they have approximately seven. Close to seven. Two thousand. Uh -huh. We're going to take a thousand out of our donation fund, so that's guaranteed. And then our share of the profits from the next four performances, we're going to instead of taking and putting it in the fund, we're going to let them use it towards the light. So. Is expediting this within your ability? I'm going to be greeted like a hero if I go back and say, oh, well, you thought yeah. we're going to do this next year, we're going to do it sooner. No, absolutely. I mean, but, uh, but you can figure out what you need for the lighting board and, and all of your lighting yeah. requests immediately so it can be executed? Yes. Yes. I mean, Instead of having two phases, you there can just is, have one. There is two, there's two weeks before the electrician comes and does his yeah. work, which has to happen anyway before we do anything. Right. So during this time, uh, we can research what exactly we're going to be buying. Um, I, I think we're going to go with new material, new equipment rather than used, because often used equipment has been beaten up quite a bit. Yeah, I understand. And uh, so we'd like to, uh, once this is done, we'd like to not to have to worry about anything for a number of years. And this will all be LED. Thank you so yeah. much for all chatting. Yeah. 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 So yes, we can have that uh, sooner. I would propose that we meet their full. Uh, is there a motion? Well, before I make a motion, could I say that I would propose that we meet them where they're at if they have 7,000, then we contribute the rest. If we, if they have 5,000, we contribute. Just because it is a community center and um, they deserve nice things too. Mm -hmm. second. The whole community deserves it. Yes. Yeah. Is there a motion? So that would mean that we would be allocating up to, uh, up to, it looks like up to 8,000. 7,000. Uh, uh, yeah, 8, up, up to 8,000. That's, so that's the operator. If it's on the high side, it'd be 8,300. Yeah. So why don't we just say that the town would put forth 8,500, if we all agree, if we vote on this, from ARPA, that the next set of funds would come from, um, the Rock River players, and then whatever formulas would come, would come from the Williamsville Hall Committee, because the Williamsville Hall Committee, I don't want to see you guys just wipe out yeah. all the money that mm -hmm. you've accumulated, because I know that you typically use that for other resources as well. Right. Yeah. 
That would be my, my thought. And I think we're all in agreement to go forward, but we do need a motion. Let's just make sure the math checks out. That's just, that's providing it's on the high side. Right. If it's on the low side. Well, I would say that we don't worry about the retired level, that the grouping that should, the group that should be able to um, put in whatever is needed beyond um, okay. um, 7,000 and, 7,000, I'm sorry, is that correct? That's what you said? 7,000 and our 8,500. Yep. Is it? I'm sorry, 7,500 from the ARPA fund. Anything additional to that would be covered by the Williamsville Hall. So mm -hmm. hopefully, mm -hmm. Williamsville yeah. Hall would not have to uh, wipe themselves clean mm -hmm. and Understand lower it because it's presumably a mm thousand -hmm. rather than two thousand. Yeah. Okay, so Good can sure. we put this in a motion form and then we can now uh, have a discussion of, about the motion? I make a motion that the town of New Faith uh, spend 7500 I'm sorry, did I say 75 or 85 before? 85. You said balls. <laughs> 8500 Use 8500 of our ARPA funds toward the uh, Williamsville Hall to um, improve their, over, their stage lighting. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Hardly. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 I have it. Right. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Yeah. Thank you, Ann. And the whole committee will be able to keep our, some of our money, put the yeah. other uses, and some win all over. So would maybe your November show will have brand new lighting to show off. Maybe. Yes. Maybe you could just give us an update as to what's happening and mm -hmm. how it's coming along. That'd be great. Uh, oh, the, the, the project. The, project. Oh, the, project. Yeah. the theater or the play. The project. The project. Oh. I can tell you about the woes of all the actors and the, <laughs> but the, no, absolutely. Yeah, just give us an update on how the project's going. That'd be great. Yeah. Excellent. Absolutely. Right. Thank you very much. I have, um, I have one request. Sure. When we post it on our website, we always include a letter that uh, that contains the request. Um, would you just write us a letter? I presume from the rock the play. play. Oh, from the hall or the play? Oh, you got your Good. Could we, right. Would it be a joint letter? Sure. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Sure. Just is that necessary because you you yeah. offered it? But I think they should just update per the meeting. This is what we're oh great. Just an update okay. and then oh. include the plans. And, and that'd be fine. Right. Like, so everyone can see the same documentation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that would be great. Well, if I can speak for Bob, I don't think we could thank you enough. Absolutely. Thank you very much. That's uh, way above yeah. and beyond the what uh, a complete surprise and I expected. Yeah. We're Thank you. Expecting a, an authorization. Yeah, go ahead with the construction and yeah. you are offering to help pay for it. So thank you Thank very you. Much. Yeah. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All that you all do. All right. Let's okay. get out of here right. before they change the name. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good evening, gentlemen. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay. Yeah. We have Mike Fritz Crawford joining us on the phone now. Good <laughs> evening, Mike. Hi, Mike. And we are up. That's okay. We're glad to have you anyway. We're up to scheduled members of the public, which we have none. We have unscheduled members, none. Any new business? No new business. Old business. Jeff is not here to talk about beautification. Ian has an update for the FEMON buyout of the South New Fame store. Go for it. Okay, so I have an update on the South Newfane store. As you remember, we were working with WRC to complete the phase one of the uh, brownfield remediation analysis of plan. 
So the stage one was an analysis of the historical uses of the property and any looking for any evidence that a phase two should be conducted. A phase two is where they actually remove any, any hazardous materials, do any testing that is required, et cetera. The phase one report came in today and um, in it, they detail about three different problems that they feel require going to a phase two. Um, just to remind you, phase one was covered by a grant that WRC had. Uh, the recommendation that I got from WRC is that we should hire the same firm that did the phase one analysis to create a work plan for a phase two. WRC has the funding to cover this additional assessment work. So they wanted the approval from the select board to go ahead. Um, once that work plan is completed, we will then know what we need to do for phase two. And then WRC has funding for the reme brownfield remediation. And um, as soon as we have that report, we can then apply to them for the use of their funding to cover our project. So it's my strong recommendation and request that we vote in favor of um, going forward with the work plan for uh, phase two. And we have not heard back from FEMA yet, but that is not unexpected. Okay, is there a motion? I make a motion to move forward with um, developing a project, a work plan for defining phase uh, phase two of the ground radiation. Mike seconded. Is there any further discussion? And what are the three problems? Um, there was, um, I won't remember all of them off the top of my head, but if you want me to open up the report, I can. But one of them was that there was one um, underground storage tank. Wait, we just lost you. Hang on. Is it there? Did they change the number? I don't think so. I might have disconnected it again. Are you working? Are you there, Ann? No. No, I still can't hear you. So one of them he thought that there was a storage uh, underground storage tank that was used as part of the gas stations um, or the pumps. And we thought that it had been emptied based on early reports that we were given. And on further review of the data, he found that one of the tanks was not emptied when it went out of use in around 1991. Um, so we just don't know any, we don't know why it wasn't empty, um, but that needs to be tested. That's a part of the reason for a phase two. I'm going to pull up the other ones for you. I think I can find yeah, I'm just mm -hmm. curious because. Sure. That's a long, it's 295 pages. Let me just get oh, to that. Right. Excellent. Two 55 gallon drums that are outside the store building on the property that are rusted and in poor condition. One of the drums has visible holes along its top and upper portions, 
The contents of the drums are unknown as no legible labels are present. Both drums were observed to be sitting directly on the ground surface. So those have to be investigated. The last item is there are two inactive 275 gallon heating oil AFTs. I'm sorry, I don't know what AFT stands for. Probably above ground storage tanks that are in the basement of the residential building. The tanks appear to be stable and stored over a concrete floor and in good conditions with no signs of release noted. As the tanks are out of service, they should be properly removed to prevent any potential future impacts to the subsurface at the subject property. It's probably the fuel tanks to heat the house. Mm -hmm. I believe so, yes. I think they're in the basement. They enter right by the um, these, these gas tanks. Or oil tanks. tanks, yeah. They probably have one for the apartment, one for the store. That would make sense. All right, is there any other discussion before we vote on the motion? Hearing on all those in favor to move forward to develop the work plan for phase two, say aye. 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 And will you be in touch, Anne, with them? I will. Would you like I'll have to know. Okay. Anything else on the South New Pink store? No, that's it for now. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Moving right along to ARPA. We just had our latest update. Yeah, yeah, I don't have anything new, so I'm glad that we're able to help the hall. Say it again. I'm glad that we are able to help the hall with this project. It will be that it will make really all the performances much better. Yeah. Um, I had a history for planning commission meeting. What's up? They attended the planning commission meeting last week. Yes. We talk, some of the issues that they're talking about are really interesting, including the issue of um, who there be a way that we could help homeowners who have these large homes that they might want to subdivide, that they might want to um, uh, turn into rental, etc., but that they need things like um, insulation or, uh, I don't know, whatever, whatever uh, help they might need. So I was talking to them about the fact, which I know I brought up here, um, that in towns like Rockingham, they have a revolving loan fund. And so I offered to get in contact with the guy uh, in Rockingham who oversees that project to get all the information because we still have a pretty healthy amount of ARPA funds left. And maybe, and I'm curious how big Rockingham fund is, but maybe it would be appropriate to earn a hundred thousand, which I think if I remember correctly, we have two hundred about two hundred thousand left. But I have to validate that. Um, but I thought that if we we might once we understand how the program works in Rockingham, and I think there are a couple of other towns that have it that I can check with, then uh, we might consider if that's a use of the money that we would want to consider because it would create, unlike a, a one-time grant, it creates a revolving fund at a very low cost um, interest rate so that this can become an ongoing asset of our community. I think it would be really great. I like that idea because I think more Wardsboro does? Okay, I'll check with them as well. I believe they have something like that because they lend it out and like you said, people pay it back at a low rate of interest over so many yeah. years. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. like the idea too. I think um, it's a way to make that nice government money stick with us for a while and help with our health. Yeah, that's the thing that I think we could even do for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep okay. that, we'll put that on for the next, to see if you have any updated information for the next time. Correct. Excellent. 
Thank you. And if anyone hears of another town that does it, please let me know and I'll contact them as well to find out. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yep. Um, and uh, we received a note that you needed extra one more. I need one more week. I had a nice half hour conversation with the woman who is doing the review up at the, um, up at the conference last week. And so she has a, a better idea, scope of everything going on. And, and, um, that's great. Okay. So we should, yes, she just needed a little more time because she was away from her desk. Yes. Any other old business or follow up items? Um, I'm just curious on the next of the meeting. Did anybody bring up like the cemetery thing up on the hill? Uh, the Manitou, yes. Merle was here and discussed it. And he's waiting to talk with Bob Fisher. I'm going to actually call Bob Fisher tomorrow. Um, he said that the equipment was pulled and. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I found out. Anyway, remember that night the meeting? Yeah. He said he couldn't get hold of the engineer, right? Yes. So I called the next morning and I talked to Ron Bell. And Ron Bell said he has to follow that plan. So I went up, I just drove up by. I heard. I didn't realize it's way down the hill where it is. Mm -hmm. I was I was closer up on the other part more, but anyway, he was down there by the gate that night, but I stopped and I talked to him. And I told him that I got a hold of Ron. You know, I had no problem. I tried his office, then I got his cell phone when I called that. And he picked it right up. And he said, yeah, you know, there was a few things that he, you know, just what I had to start doing. And uh, instead of following the plan, so I suggested to Mike, I said, Mike, I said, you know, one way you get out of this thing to keep your project going is to tear that damn culvert up and go by your plan that he's got drawn for you. Well, you know, this is the thing, you know, this makes it better, this makes it better. It doesn't matter if it makes it better or not. You've already got one landowner complaining that the water is going to interfere with his property eventually or something. We don't know that unless it's done by an engineer. The fake guy is not an engineer, and that's what Ron said. And uh, I said, your best thing to do is tear this thing out and go back and follow the plan. You know, and it's, you know, like me and Jay, like Jay said, you know, that the culvert down the bottom was big enough to handle it and whatever else. So, I mean, he's just, you know, you try to help him, try to tell him what to do. And he's down the term and he's going to leave that damn culvert in there. Well, we haven't gotten an updated plan, which is what was talked about. And uh, he wasn't here this evening, and right. so I think but, he's yeah, adequately... I was telling you what I found, so I told you I'd go see him and talk to him. Yeah. And then I did, and then like I said, Gordon showed up, and I guess he thought maybe I'd have to have a meeting I'll plan to it, which I said, no, I said, I, just, I didn't know where the road was, so I drove up to look, and he was here. So Gordon and I talked, and Gordon said, well, I'd like you to, I want to talk to you too, because there's a lot of other violations, which I could see a couple of myself. <laughs> and I told Martin that I would give him a call. Okay. But, you know, it's just like Ron said, you know, there's no need to be another engineer to you know, start the whole process over. But um, he said he didn't have time to deal with it for a couple of weeks, but he said if he just go by the plan, take the damn culvert back out and go, you know, do like he's supposed to, he can continue on doing what he's got going. Well, <clears throat> I think we've protected our ourselves as the town by by stopping it, it he's yeah. he's proven multiple times now that he's unwilling to follow a plan and and that's yeah. that we have to we have to act on that he's right. demonstrated that he's unwilling to follow it yeah so Merle and I are making follow-up phone calls and trying to get a hold of Bob Fisher to see what he's calling about for it. And then we're going to send out an email with the information that we would receive. Right. Like I said, I think all it is, we, we've already done what we had to do. And he's not willing to go back and follow what we're instructed him to do. Or he's instructed by his engineer. And, uh, yeah, it's up to him now, I guess. Yeah. We're, also, we're going to report back. Yeah, for some reason he wants that forward, I don't know why. I don't know. 
But thank you for doing that. Yeah. All right, more information to come. Uh, is there any other business to discuss? If not, I'd like to suspend our regular select board meeting at 7.10 and open up the Board of Liquor Control meeting. I don't need motions for that, right? We have an application for this weekend for the Heritage Festival weekend from the Putney Mountain Winery. I'd like to do samples or sell wine on the common for during the Heritage Festival. Is there a motion to approve that? I make a motion to approve it. A second it. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Did you? I didn't hear you, Andy. Did Anne. you respond? Oh, we can't oh, hear you again. again. Okay. The lights went out. <laughs> Do I need to say anything Um, no, I, I'll just get the minutes tomorrow. I'll okay. sure. submit it online. Oh, the eyes have it. So, yes. Mm -hmm. There we go. Anne, will you test? Oh, no. 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 Oh, there you are. I don't have those yet. All right, is there a motion to adjourn the Board of Liquor Control meeting? I make a motion. Second. Oh, we, don't need a second to we don't need a second to return. Hey, we're going to resume our regular select board meeting at 7.12. Do we have any correspondence? No, other than what I told you about in my report. Yeah. And we need a motion that Katie and I approve pay orders. I made a motion. I'll second any it. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Aye's got it. And with that, we're going to move right into pay orders. Thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. I appreciate all of your hard work, and have a great evening.